Hello everyone, Drew here from Lone Fox. Do I have a DIY video for you guys today? I will let you all know, I whipped together these DIY projects all day yesterday on Saturday. But sometimes when I'm under pressure and wanting to create content and I just wanted to post a video today, I just wanted to connect with you guys. Love reading your comments and also quickly before jumping in, today is our fifth vintage drop over on Lone Fox, which is so exciting because these vintage drops are very few and far between. And if you don't know what a vintage drop is it is essentially a curated selection of vintage and antique goods that I have sourced. I think it's been about six or seven months since drop number four. So I dropped over a hundred items over on my website today. So if you'd like to go check them out, see if anything might be perfect for your home and kind of get that Lone Fox look. A lot of the vintage and antique that you see me use in my home, of course I can't link it. So I love being able to offer similar pieces so you can get somewhat of a similar look. So definitely browse before it is gone over on LoneFox.com. But today, if you do not want to shop vintage and you want to make some DIYs because I totally understand some of us don't care about vintage vintage has a high price point and guess what we are going to be DIYing and these projects are budget friendly they are easy they are fun to recreate and they're also customizable and I have four of them so if you are not already make sure to subscribe to my channel I post brand new home decor and DIY videos every single week here on Lone Fox and normally with these videos there's kind of like a theme so they're either fall related DIYs or TikTok DIYs but this one I just want to create projects that I have been loving lately these are just things that I've been wanting to make and I've had on my mind and I wanted to sit down and take a day, create them all. So let's get started. <laughs> I have been so in love with this curtain lamp by Ana Luisa Corgan, but the price tag of $23.50 is quite high. However, I thought we could create somewhat of a similar lampshade just using a white simple shade. I picked this one up at Lowe's and some fabric that I also got at Joanne's Fabric. This is kind of like a linen-y fabric in a beige color, and while I was there, I also got these embroidery hoop because I realized that the inner embroidery hoop, when I took them apart, actually fit on the outside of this lampshade perfectly. So I thought we could use this as the structure to create our curtain shade. We're going to need to sew a pocket at the top there. So I folded it over an inch and then I brought out my sewing machine. I've actually had this sewing machine I think since I was in sixth grade, believe it or not. So I've had this for so long. I folded it over an inch and then I sewed about a three quarter inch wide pocket. That way we could slip that ring through, but just depending on whatever size of ring you use, just sew a pocket accordingly. And this is how it's going to be looking. And then I wanted to decide how tall I wanted it to be. So all I did was I actually added an inch and a half to the height of my shade. So I had a nine inch tall lampshade so I cut mine at 10 and a half inches and I used a ruler to just measure this out please don't look at my just absolutely scary hair I am so sorry it was so in frame like that I do apologize so I cut this at 10 and a half inches tall all the way down connected it up with my scissors but you could draw a line if you'd like to and I brought this over to the sewing machine and just did a nice little kind of quarter inch hem on that bottom edge I actually was really surprised how quick this lampshade came together don't forget to back stitch at the start and stop of whenever you're doing these projects because stitches really can fall out so easy. I have had so many projects unravel when I have not backstitched. So this is what your panel should look like. And we are now going to be opening up the embroidery hoop. That way we could slip it on. So I just use this pair of scissors that I have that I knew would cut this wood. The embroidery hoop is not super strong so you could probably really use anything. And I slipped on the piece of fabric that we had sewn the pocket onto and just kind of worked it around the entire embroidery hoop until it was on and I actually just used the width of my fabric bolt to determine how much fabric was on there. I didn't even cut it at all and in order to connect these back together I just created two small holes in each of the embroidery hoops. I could not figure out how to connect these back together so I just was like you know what we're gonna do two small holes and tie it back together which works perfectly. You can also probably use tape if you wanted to and then just maneuver that seam on the inside of the pocket. Now I did have an opening on the back side. I didn't even end up stitching that shut because I figured it could be at the back side of the lamp and if I ever wanted to kind of change this fabric out I can use the base again but I absolutely love how this ended up looking it fit perfectly on the lampshade I was genuinely shocked when I popped this on it looks so much like our inspo photo and it probably took me like 15 to 20 minutes to recreate so I could see myself using so many different patterned fabrics or like a stripe in the future lots of options with this one
For the mirror for this project, I got this at Lowe's. It's a 20 by 24 inch mirror. It was $25, so a great price. And I'm also going to be using this wavy roofing trim and these two inch by two inch wooden dowels. And I got four of these dowels and I also got two pieces of this roofing trim. It comes in eight inch sections along with some Gorilla wood glue. I already had this in my stash. So I'm actually going to be connecting our two inch dowels to this wavy roofing trim. And the width of this roofing trim is actually one and three quarters inch. So as you can see, when you create it flush on one side, there's actually going to be a quarter inch gap on the other edge, but that's perfect because we're actually going to use that to inset our mirror and have a nice flush finish in the end. I'm using some clamps to hold this in place while it dries, and you're going to want that front edge to be nice and flush, almost like the wavy trim is an extension of the front. And my dowels were three foot section, so I had to create four of these, one for each side, and I unboxed the mirror and placed it right along that wavy trim. The wavy trim is going to be on the inset of our frame. So I'm actually just using a pencil to mark kind of the edge of the mirror on either side and then drawing out in the direction of our miter. That way I know which way the angle needs to be cut because I will always mess this up. Do not get me wrong. I'm going to do this on the top, the bottom, and the left and the right sides on all of the little sections that we glued our wavy trim on. And then I brought this out to the miter saw and just mitered them down. So we're basically going to be needing two pieces that are the same for the top and bottom and two pieces that are the same for the right and left sides and you can kind of see here what I'm talking about so these are going to be the top and bottom pieces then we have our left and right sides of the mirror and that wavy trim is going to be on the inside so if you can imagine the back side has that quarter inch inset which is where our mirror is going to go so I'm using my brad nailer to just add five or six nails in either direction and once these nails kind of cross each other in these corners it's going to create a nice strong joint so I did it on all four sides connecting up those cuts and as you could see these look so perfect. I was shocked how incredible all of it kind of attached up together and how great the wavy trim connected up in the corners. It looks really seamless all the way around, but if yours doesn't, don't worry. We're going to be fixing that in a second. So I flipped this over, popped my mirror on the inside, and it fit just seamlessly. And that's what I mean by that little tiny inset. It just made the mirror fit perfect. Here's where we're going to fix any imperfections. I'm using some wood filler to actually fill in any cracks, any gaps, kind of the seam in between the dowel and that wavy trim that we did. So I'm adding this wood filler generously on the entire top surface because I'm going to be sanding it off in the end and that's really going to give us the clean finish that we want. So I'm going to be applying as much wood filler as I need, letting that dry down for about an hour and a half, two hours, and then bringing it outside. And I'm using a 220 grit sandpaper to get this super, super smooth. That wood filler is just going to fill any gaps for when we go to spray paint. And I'm using this Rust-Oleum Satin Protect Enamel in the color Brick Red because I have been loving an accent pop of red. And I'll say right now, I was genuinely shocked with how incredible this spray paint went on. It was so opaque. It covered so seamlessly. I just did two easy coats and I love, love, love the way that this mirror ended up looking. I'm just going to pop it in in the end and display it like this. I'm going to be using a tissue box to create a template in order to create a tissue box cover. So I used this cardboard left over from the previous mirror project that we had, and I'm tracing down one side of our tissue box because once we have one side, that's going to give us all four sides. And I'm going to be adding a half inch seam allowance to the left, right, and top sides of our template. So I'm going to be adding some additional kind of excess space, um, about a half of an inch on all three sides, then cutting that out. But we don't need it on the bottom edge because we're not going to be sewing that edge. And since all four sides are the same, we only need one of these. So once we have our kind of side template created, we're also going to create a template for the top. So doing the same exact thing and then adding a half inch seam allowance on all the sides for this one because we are going to be attaching it. So now that we have our two templates, this is what I'm actually going to be applying it to. This is an antique quilt kind of just fragment piece that I have. And I love the colors in this so much. The textures, the hand 
stitching on it, just every element about this quilt I adore so much. So I'm actually gonna be placing my template over the top of this quilt and I figured, you know what, why not repurpose this into something that I can keep forever and I absolutely love how this turns out in the end. You guys are going to be obsessed with it. So I cut out four side pieces and then one top panel all out of this vintage quilt and these are gonna be our side panel pieces. Now, how we are actually gonna be connecting these is right sides together, so make sure that you put the same sides that you want out together and then you're gonna sew a seam along the edge using your sewing machine. I just did a quarter inch seam right along that edge, opened it up, and then you're gonna repeat the process of making sure that the right sides of your piece are together. So facing down our quilt side that we want faced out, then sewing a seam right up that edge there and connecting our third facet of our tissue box. So this is gonna be creating the outside kind of structure cube. Then we're gonna be adding the top section. So adding on our fourth panel there, we're going to be folding this all the way over, sewing our last side together to essentially create a ring of fabric. course I needed to see what it looked like so I flipped it out to get an idea and it's looking so good so far but we did need to flip it back that way we can add on the top piece of our tissue box cover so I'm going to be just placing this on and then when you actually sew on the top section when you get to each corner just make sure to pick up the entire piece and then just kind of pivot it to the new side that you are sewing on sew down that new edge when you get to the corner and make sure your needle is down pivot it and repeat the process I'm going to flip this all the way out just like this and now we essentially kind of have a cube that doesn't have one side this is going to slip over the top of our tissue box and I will say I definitely made mine just a little bit too large however I kind of like the kind of fluffy chunky feel of it I totally feel like because it's quilted it has this puffy element to it that I don't mind at all I do think if I wanted it to be really tight and kind of like polished and sleek on there I would go ahead and just do a little less of a seam allowance but in my case I love the way that this ended up looking I got a little bit of embroidery floss that way we can clean up the top hole that I cut and I just created a slit down the center of our top panel that we sewed on and then I'm using some embroidery floss just to create a blanket stitch on the edge of that and that's just where you go up the back side of your piece and then you're just gonna go and loop it around and then pull that thread through so kind of up the back side just like this and then loop your string around and then just pull that through and that's how you create a blanket stitch I'm also going to be doing that on the bottom this is just to keep all the layers of this quilt together and also kind of add a little bit more of that handmade element to it I always love the way a blanket stitch looks Of course, I also had to give this a try. So I pulled a few tissues out, popped the tissue box cover over the top so I can swap this tissue box out basically whenever I'd want to and just keep the cover. And then you can pull the tissues out of here. And how cute is this? Like, have you ever seen a better tissue box cover? I just love the way that this looks. And with the template I shared in this video, you can create it out of any textile. save my favorite project for last and I don't know if you've seen these bookshelf sconces that they have out on the market but I recently came across them and thought they were so cool for styling or for a bookshelf and then I came across these ones on Amazon and then an idea popped in my head and I could not wait to share it with you and these sconces you get two of them for $50 and they are stunning quality so I'll link them below for you but what I actually needed to do was disconnect the wire from the sconce so essentially kind of make this a hardwired sconce for a second and then we're going to reattach the wire back to it to make it a plug-in sconce again. So I had to do a little bit of dissecting on this piece, but once I had the wires disconnected, I actually did use a little tiny bit of green tape to two wires that were connected together previously. That way I know which sets of wires went where, and you'll see me again use that in the future. But once I pulled everything apart, this is a piece that we're actually going to want to be connecting up to a vintage book. Yes, a vintage book. And this one here, I figured, you know what? This old welding encyclopedia 
encyclopedia from 1921. I just don't know how often someone's actually going to be using this. I've had it in my book stash forever, and I figured, you know what, I'm still going to utilize it as the look of a book as it once was on the shelf, but we're going to give it new life. So I'm using the same 2x2 wooden dowel because it fits inside of this book perfectly, and I'm actually going to just be measuring the length at which I need to cut this down, because you're going to need to cut one of the dowel pieces down to the length of the book, and then two additional pieces just two inches shorter than the book, and you're going to see why, because the actual piece that's cut full length is going to go all the way in the spine of the book, and I'm using a generous amount of wood glue on the spine, and also the two sides that are going to be connecting to the front and back cover. I'm pressing this wood chunk in the back there, and this is just going to give stability and sturdiness to our piece. It's also adding weight to it, because we are going to be having a sconce hanging off the front side, which you're going to see in a minute here. So I added on my clamp, and then I'm going to also be gluing in the two wood pieces that are cut just two inches shorter, and these pieces are going to be glued in the top section of the book, so we're going to be leaving that bottom side open, and when I glued in this wood piece here, how much does that actually look like pages of a book? I was genuinely shocked when I closed this, like the grain of the wood looks like pages, and I added a few clamps from each direction just to kind of hold it, but let it dry for about six hours or until it's cured, and then we're able to start adding in the electrical. And for this part, it is actually extremely easy, so I'm going to go ahead and just add this sconce arm at the very bottom of the book, so probably about three quarters of an inch up from the bottom, and I found a drill bit that looked to be the exact width of the threading on the end of the sconce, so I'm going to be drilling through that bottom piece of wood, and this is only going through the first piece because if you remember the second and third pieces, they didn't go all the way through, and that's because we want our cording to be able to go through the book still. So I threaded through the wiring, and then in order to get this sconce on there, so as you saw previously, there was a bolt on the backside that held the canopy on, so I figured if I used enough force and pressed this against a piece of wood, I thought after a minute of kind of pressing this and twisting it, it would start screwing itself in, and that is exactly what it did. It only took me like 30 seconds, and I had this completely mounted into our book with the wiring coming out of the bottom, and it was just looking so promising, so that green piece of tape allowed me to reattach it to the green wire that I also had added the green tape to. I added on the previous little caps, squeezed those down so they were nice and secure, and once I had this all connected back up, I was able to pop the shade on the sconce, and that is how we have our very own book light sconce. And you guys, I've never seen anything like this before. I love this. It could totally enhance a bookshelf so much, and honestly, I think I might need a few more of these. so much for watching this video and I hope this gave you some inspo or an idea or a craft project to work on this week or upcoming weekend and let me know which project was your favorite in the comment section below. I would love to know. I can genuinely see myself using all four of these projects around my home. The lampshade is staying. The quilted little tissue box is absolutely staying. The wavy mirror. The book sconce. Like these projects honestly this might be one of my best DIY videos in terms of concepts and projects so let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. Also, do not forget to check out Vintage Drop number five. This is six or seven months of vintage and antique goods I've been collecting over on LoneFox.com. Shoppable for you guys and orders over 100 ship for free, which is amazing. So tap that link at the top of the description and I will catch you guys all in my next one. Bye!